Okay, let's get started making our base pages. So we are going to have three base pages. All right, and the base page itself is going to measure nine and a half long by five and three quarters tall. Okay, and then you're going to score at three quarters of an inch and then at one and a half. And then we can go ahead and fold those and burnish them. Okay. And you're going to be scoring at three quarters and one and a half on the nine and a half inch side. Okay. So that's the base page. Every base page is going to have a pocket on the front and a pocket on the back and then a flap that's going to be on top of those pockets. Okay. So all three of our base page is going to have that. Okay. So let's start with the pocket first. So our pocket measures five and a half inches tall by eight and seven eighths wide. And you're going to score at half an inch on both sides and then a half an inch across the bottom. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish. I am leaving it an eighth shorter than our page because I don't want it to get in the way of our score lines of our, our where our page bends. So just for ease of use, it is better. All right, so now I folded all those score lines. Now I'm gonna cut out my corners here. So right across that square that we created by folding, just like that. All right, and I'm gonna rescore that just so we have nice flat pieces to work with. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and put glue on my bottom flap first. And this I'm working with right now is 80 pound cardstock. I'm really enjoying that weight lately. And the color is called Sahara Sand. And it is from Stampin' Up. So if you have a Stampin' Up demonstrator that you like to work with, you can get it from them. All right, so just burnish that down on there. So basically what we did is we attached it so that we were lined up with our outside, with the front of our page here, so that we have a space all the way down here between our pocket and where our book, our page bends, okay? Then we are going to burnish it down in here a bit better. And now we will add glue to these little flaps here. You could add your glue as always all at once on your flaps, but I just find for preciseness, that is not the easiest way to go about it. All right, and we will burnish that down. Just like this. Okay, so the tops of all of our big pockets here are going to have a flap. And for the front of the pages, I'm gonna have the flap coming from this side. So this piece measures eight and a half by five, and then you're just gonna score at five eighths of an inch on the eight and a half inch side. And the only reason we're scoring at five eighths is because I didn't wanna cut it down from eight and a half because it's already eight and a half. So I just found it easier to just go one more eighth in my score mark and just score at five eighths. If you do want to cut off that eighth of an inch, you can go ahead and do that. And then you would just score at half inch. Okay. I just found it to be a little bit easier to just leave it and just score another eighth of an inch over. So now I'm just mitering my little flap corners here and I'm going to add my glue to that just like so and line it up right here along this edge just like so and make sure it's even with your page at the front and you want it even with your pockets top and bottom with your pocket top and bottom so you can just turn it over and make sure it's not standing over on the other side and now just burnish that down and we are going to add a magnet here to keep this closed but we can do that later 
So we are going to do the exact same process on the other side. We are first going to add a pocket. So again, this pocket measures five and a half by eight and seven eighths. And you're just gonna score at half an inch on both sides of the eight and seven eighths and then just half an inch on the five inch side, okay? And I'm just burnishing those score lines down. Just like so. And then I'm gonna cut my corners out to reduce the bulk. Sometimes I find it easier to see on the back. Take a little bit more out of this one. All right, and again, I'm gonna attach my bottom flap first. And you guys might notice when I'm making these books, I always dry fit first. I always put it on there and see that it's, you know, how it's gonna fit, right? Because sometimes your scoring can be a little bit wonky. There's a lot of things that can happen. So before you add glue, always just check it out, see if it fits. So I'm adding glue again, just on my bottom flap here. And it's gonna go all the way to the outside and all the way to the bottom. So just line it up. Like so. And then you should see that gap going all the way down there which is what we want. All right, now we can open that up and burnish it down like that. And then we can give it a quick score one more time before we go ahead and glue it down. All right. I love to score and reburnish and reburnish because it really helps to break the fibers of those pa of the paper and helps everything to go together much nicer. All right, and then just burnish it on, just like so. Now for this one, our flap is gonna come from the front here. So I'm gonna attach it here so the it comes towards the back. And remember this is eight and a half by five and I just scored it five eighths of an inch on the eight and a half inch side. All right, and I'll add my glue to my flap. And just attach it right along this side here. So all the way to the edge and all the way to the bottom. And it should line up to be the exact same size of the pocket that's underneath. And again, like I said, we're gonna add a magnet later to that, okay? So that is how each base page should look. You should have a pocket on the front and the back, and then you should have two flaps on there coming from the back, okay? So I went ahead and I've already created the rest of my base pages. So I've created three base pages now, and now we will start doing the different layouts on all of them. Okay, so we are done our base pages, right? So we have a pocket and a flap on each page. So what we're gonna do is the book is going to have the three base pages and then there's going to be three different styles that we're gonna do. So you're gonna repeat each one twice for technically all six of your pages, okay? I'm gonna show you three base pages. So base page A is gonna have a pocket 
inside this front flap on top of this pocket here, okay? So that pocket measures six inches wide by four and a half inches tall, and it's gonna go right here along this side. So first, let's go ahead and trim out our corners, and then we're gonna grab the envelope punch board and just do a cute little design at the top here. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to line this score line here up with the one and a half inch mark, okay? So the one and a half inch mark, I'm gonna line that up right there. And I'm gonna punch down and then I'm gonna flip my piece and line this score line on this side up also with the one and a half inch line, okay? And then the pattern paper to mat this pocket with here. So the pattern paper to go on top of this measures four and three quarters by three and three quarters. And on the four and three quarter inch side, we are going to punch at one and a quarter, flip it, and punch at one and a quarter. All right, so now what we need is a straight edge and a cutting surface and a cutting knife. And we are just going to cut out this tab here, okay? So just line it up so that it's right at the bottom of these dips and just cut across. Just like that. And the same thing for the top of your pockets. Just grab and make sure it's at the bottom of the dips. And then cut across. Just like this. And if you do have any little frays, always go ahead and just cut those off, okay? And I am gonna just pop this on here before I put my pocket on. And this is just my trusty Fabri-Tac. So I believe that Fabri-Tac is a solvent-based glue versus a water-based glue, which is why it won't warp or wrinkle at all. And that is why I like to use it with matting. I love my Arcolytic glue for attaching tabs and things like that, but I do find sometimes, no matter how thick my paper is, I still get wrinkles with the Arc Litter glue. So I believe they're both very, very useful to have in your crafting stash. But for me, they serve different purposes entirely. All right, so we've got all of our edges burnished. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this pocket right here on top of this pocket. And it's gonna go all the way to the top and the bottom, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of space back here, so about a quarter inch between my flap and my pocket, okay? Just because I want it to be, have room in there to fold over top of it. All right, so again, I'm just attaching glue to just the bottom of my pocket for now. And I'm gonna line it up right along this edge, all the way top and bottom, but just leave yourself a little bit of space there. Let's make sure that it's where it's supposed to be. And you can burnish it down and then we'll add glue to these flaps here. And this one here. And then just bring those down. Like 
like that, and then we can burnish. And you can anywhere through the book where if there if there aren't pockets on the inside of the flaps, you can add this pocket wherever you'd like. It would be the same size going this way. All right, so that's one pocket attached inside here. So now we're gonna work on the front of the flap. So the front of the pocket is gonna have two flaps coming in from either side. So the flaps measure five and a half by four and a quarter. And you are going to score at half inch on the five and a half inch side. And let's go ahead and burnish these all down. Just like so. This is a great way to add photo real estate to your pages. All right, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna attach two of them together on top of each other, just like this. So add glue to one flap. And it's gonna go right on top of this one on the same side that the other flap is. Just like so, and then you can burnish it on. Just like that, and then we'll do the uh, same thing to the other two pieces. Add your glue and attach it to the top of this flap. And burnish. And then you can also open it up and burnish it. Just like this, okay. So now one of these is going to get attached on this side of the flap and one of these will get attached on this side. Okay. So I'm just going to leave about a quarter inch of space at the top and the bottom. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. It's more, yeah, it's about a quarter inch between a quarter inch and three eighths, somewhere in there. Burnish that. So I just left about that much space, top and bottom. And then for the other one, add your glue to your flap. And then you'll just line it up with this one. Just make sure they're aligned before you put it down. Just like this, and then open it up and burnish it down. All right, so now what's gonna happen is this one will come down on this side and this one will come down. No, this one, this one this one and then this one you can really pick which flap you want at the top it's not super important but i want it closing the same way as this big flap so for the closure what i did is this is a piece it's actually just a scrap but i know it's two it's about two and an eighth wide by five and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add glue to about that much of it. Not the whole thing, about that much. And then I'm going to add it on top here, like there, about like there. And you're definitely going to want to do this step before you do pattern paper, unless you want to mat it and that would look nice too. But. And then I'm going to add a magnet. So I'm going to add two, 
one set of magnets and you guys know I like the basic gray and they already have the glue on the back of them and it just really really simplifies things when you're building an album all right and then remove the backing off of that one and press that down so that is one of our page styles so it's going to open here and then you have all these photos so there's eight photo opportunities right there and then at least two back here and then you have your flap that opens two photos here a pocket here and a pocket back here right from our base page so let's go ahead and add our magnet in here as well to close it up and i'm just gonna put it here first and then remove the backing off the other one and close that one over so that way our magnets are all good to go all right so that completes page style a so let's work on page style b okay so let's get started on page style b so for page style B, again, you have your pocket here, your flap on top. So this is going to go so under the flap, we are going to have a belly band and our belly band measures two and a half by six. And I just scored it at half an inch on both sides. And we're going to add our glue to both flaps at the same time. And it's just going to go right in the center on top of the pocket. Just like that. Give it a good burnish. And then or inside the pot or to slide inside the belly band and it measures seven and a quarter by nine and you're just going to score it at four and a half right in the middle so that it folds over just like this and this is just going to slide inside our belly band and just add some some photo storage inside of there all right so for the top of our flap we're going to have a cute little envelope style page so you're going to need two pieces that measure seven and seven eighths by two and a half. And on the two and a half inch side, you're going to score it half an inch. And we can go ahead and burnish these down. Our score lines. And then for that, we are going to need to attach the pattern paper. Before we attach these, we do need to add the closure to the pattern paper that's going to go on here. So the pattern paper measures seven and five eighths by one and three quarters of an inch. So one and three quarters by seven and five eighths. And we are just going to work on our closure that's going to go on top of these. Okay. So what we need for that is two little circles like this. Um, you could use any shape. I'm going to use circles and then you'll also need two brads. So what we're going to do, and I just die cut these with a die, but you can definitely, you can definitely use a punch. So basically I'm just going to center this onto here and just poke my hole and then put my brad through and then just open that up at the back just like this okay and then we'll do the second one the same way just kind of center it on there but let's try to line these up so just put it on top of that one. That looks pretty darn close to me. 
and then poke your hole again and put the bread through and then we'll open that one up okay so now what we need to do is get these flaps back in the ones that are seven and seven eighths by two and a half and you will have scored at half an inch on the two and a half inch side and what we're going to do is lay these on top of this one corner to corner and I'm using my corner rounder and I'm going to use the quarter inch side. You can use any corner rounder. I'm using the We Are Memory Keepers and it has a half inch and a quarter inch corner rounder. And I'm just using the quarter inch and you're going to do the same thing on this one. So just line them up. You could punch them separately but I find you get a nicer, it aligns nicer when you punch them at the same time. And it saves time too, just like so, okay? Now while we're punching, let's do the little sides of our envelope as well. So these two pieces measure two and a half by four and three quarters. So four and three quarters. So you can go ahead and fold these in. And then we have some pattern paper here and these measure one and three quarters by four and a half. And you can just again, line them up into the corners and we will punch. And we just scored it half an inch on the two and a half inch side. That did not punch very well. All right, and we'll do this one up here and punch that one. And then same thing for this one. Line it up in the corners. And punch. All right. Now we can go ahead and glue all of the pattern paper to the tops of these. Okay, so let's get our page back in. And we are first going to miter all of these little half inch flaps. So just miter them from the corner up. And again, we just do this because it helps our layers on top underneath to lay flatter, just like that. All right, now we can go ahead and attach them to this top flap here. So they are gonna get attached to the top and the bottom. So let's start with the top flap first. So it's gonna go all the way to both sides and all the way to the top. All right, so just like this. And then we'll attach the other one at the bottom here. So just get your glue on the flap. And I am using the art glitter. And just 
attach that one all the way to the bottom of our flap and all the way to both sides. And you can always open up your flap and make sure you haven't gone over. And then burnish that on. All right, now these little guys are gonna get attached to the sides here and they are a quarter inch smaller than the flap. So you're just gonna kind of center them in between your other two flaps and I'll show you that in just a second. Just like that. And because it's gonna get attached right along the edge. So just like this, just a tiny bit of space here and here, exactly an eighth of an inch, pretty much. And then we'll attach the other one over here on this side. Put your glue on there. And then just center it between the two. Make sure you're getting it all the way to the edge. And then we can burnish that down. Just like so. All right, now these will come in. And these two will come down. And then we are going to grab some twine. This is just some black and white baker's twine. And I'm looping it under the top one and I'm gonna make a knot. And then I'm gonna bring it back to the top and make another knot. And then I'll bring it down here and around. Probably just once is good. And I'll cut off the excess here. And then I'd like to just leave a little bit hanging about that much. And then that is the closure for this cute little envelope style page. All right, for the closure inside here, what we're gonna do is put it right on top of the belly band, as far to this side as we can get with still being able to nicely put some pattern paper over that. So probably, mm, right about there, seems good to me. And then remove the backing and close that up. So it's a little further back than I usually do, but I did want it to not interfere with the booklet. All right, so now let's work on page style C. So page style C is going to start with two little angle pockets inside underneath the flap here, okay? So for that, you're gonna need a piece that measures five by five, and you're gonna score it a half an inch on all four sides and then we're going to go ahead and cut it diagonally across here so just line up your tips in your cutter and cut just like this okay i'm going to erase this little top bit of my measurements. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and this pocket's gonna go here and this pocket is gonna go here. So we're gonna go ahead and just fold these score lines 
and burnish them for both pieces. Just like so. All right, and then we're gonna grab our scissor and fold over the flaps just like this. And then we are going to cut out, cut off the little bit that sticks over once we fold it. So just like this. And then down here, you are going to cut diagonally to your point here of your pocket and diagonally to the point so that we have it looking like this on the back. So same thing for this one. Fold it over and cut off that bit there. And then again down here, cut diagonally and cut diagonally, okay? Just like so. All right, we'll get this out of the way. And I'm just gonna give them one more nice burnish so they lay really nice and flat for me. And then we will attach them down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue to these two flaps. And we'll add the first one here. I'm not going all the way up against the score line. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and then all the way to the bottom down here. So just a touch of space there. And then we can burnish that one. And then I kind of just like to go in with my bone folder and make sure that the glue isn't sticking down anything it's not supposed to stick down and then i'll add my glue to this one like so and add it right here in this corner so all the way to both sides of the corner and then we can burnish that one down Just like so, and then while we're in here, let's go ahead and add our magnet for the closure. So get my positive and my negative and let them snap together. And then I will place it about right here and close that over wherever it falls and close that over. So that's about where the closure will be. So now let's work on the top of our flap here. So we're gonna work on two pieces at once because we're going to punch them with the envelope punch board. So the first one measures six by eight. And on the six inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch on both sides. And on the eight inch side, you're just gonna score at half an inch at the bottom. And we can go ahead and just Cut across, cut those corners off, just like so. And then the second piece is six by three, and you scored half an inch on both sides of the three inch length. And then at half an inch on the six inch side. So just two short side and one long side. And then again, we'll cut across those corners. Then I'm gonna grab the envelope punch board and we are gonna line this line up with the one and a half inch mark and punch. Now you don't have to do this if you don't have the envelope punch board. You can either just leave it plain or you could use a border punch across the top or something like that. We're also gonna line up this score mark here with the one and a half inch mark and punch and we're gonna do the same thing for this one so line that score mark up with the one and a half and punch 
and this one as well. All right, and we're gonna do our pattern paper at the same time. So for the pattern paper, you need one piece that measures four and three quarters by two and a quarter, and then one piece that measures four and three quarters by one and a quarter, okay? And we're gonna punch these guys at, we're gonna line them up at one and a quarter in here and flip it and do one and a quarter. And then the same thing for this one. I think I'm gonna go up here with it. One and a quarter, flip it, and one and a quarter. And now we can get our cutting surface. And our craft knife and a metal ruler and we'll just go ahead and cut out all those centers just like we did earlier so all of these little middle tabs so remember we just aligned the bottom of these dips with the bottom of the ruler and cut across We'll go ahead and glue the pattern paper on before we move on. So this one is going to get attached up here and we just needed a small piece because that's all that's going to be showing of the top of the pockets. So that is all we need on there. So just line it up so that you've got Nice even border around the top there. About like that looks good. And then we'll do this smaller one. And put that on there. Just like so. Again, with that nice even border. Oh, I love this paper. It's so cool. All right, so now let's grab our base page back in. So we have our little flap here that's opening to this side. Our pocket is gonna get attached this way on our flap. So let's go ahead and fold and burnish these score lines. like so all right and this piece is going to get attached right on top of this pocket so i'm just going to do my bottom flap for now You guys know I'm too much of a wussy to put it everywhere at once. And just attach it all the way to the bottom of this flap and all the way to the top. Then you can open it up and burnish it. And then we'll add our glue to these flaps here. I mostly work with black cardstock for my album bases. So this feels very refreshing and fun to work with different colored cardstocks in this book. All right. So burnish that on there nicely. your flap and burnish all right so that's that pocket attached so 
So now next we're gonna work on a little flap that has a frame on it. So we'll place this aside for now. So for that, you are going to need two pieces of cardstock and one is going to measure five and a half by five and the other one is going to measure six by five and a half. And then on the six by five and a half inch piece, you're going to score it half an inch on both sides of the six inch width and then just half an inch on one of the five and a half. Okay. And we can go ahead and cut these corners just like so. And this is the piece we're going to cut our frame into. And then the piece that that's going to go on to is going to measure five and a half by five. And on the five and a half inch side, you're just going to score at half an inch. All right, so now what we've got here is four strips that measure four and three quarters by half an inch. And to make it easier to cut our frame, we're going to do this part first. So you're going to take two of your pieces and you're going to put them together like this so that they're even front and back. And we are just going to cut from the bottom corner up to the top corner, just like this. Okay, so you're going to come off with little triangles from both of them. And then you're going to do the same thing with this one. Make sure they're even. And cut, just like this. So this one is going to go here. And then you're going to take your last one and align it with your bottom one here and I find it easier to turn it over to cut it but you can go either way and again just cut diagonally up and then we'll do the same thing with this last one here line them up corner to corner and then cut up from there to that point okay just like this all right now we can move these little guys here out of the way and then what we're going to do so make sure they're all still where they're supposed to be they went rogue what we're going to do is turn these all over and tack them together okay so basically, what I like to do is take this one and flip it over to this side. Take this one, flip it here. Then this one flips here. And this one flips here. And then I'm just going to take some quarter inch score tape. And this is just to tack them together. So I'm going to tack them together on all the corners. Sometimes the final one can be a little bit tricky but it is much easier to do it at this stage than it is once it's, or trying to get these equally attached in the book, believe me, <laughs> that has been a headache. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take this and place it onto our piece that has, was six by five and a half. You're just gonna place it on there so you have about an eighth of an inch of space around all four sides. So just go ahead and remove those little backings from your tape. And then we're going to use the Fabri-Tac to add it on because I get a little bit more wiggle time with the Fabri-Tac. So just add a little bit all the way around, just like so. And it is square, obviously, so you don't have to worry about orientation. And then just kind of wiggle it around till it's in place. Just like that. All 
All right, so now we're just gonna cut out this center. So grab your cutting surface, whatever you're using, and a straight edge and your craft knife. And we're going to leave about as much space as we have out here, so about an eighth of an inch. And we're going to start about an eighth of an inch from the top and end about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. And this does not have to be super, super exact. All right, and that is our frame all cut out. So before we attach the frame, we need to add our piece of acetate to the back here. So the acetate measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters, and I've just attached the quarter inch score tape all the way around the edge, just like so. And then we'll just place it onto our opening here. Like that. Make sure not to go on any of your score lines because it won't close if you do. All right, so that is looking good. So let's bring these in. Our little side flaps. And the bottom and then you can also go ahead and just burnish it from the top okay so our pocket is going to get attached to one of our five and a half by five inch flaps that we scored at half an inch on the five and a half inch side and it is going to get attached like this so our flap is going this way here it's going to get attached on top of it like this so I'm going to go ahead and add my glue to my bottom flap and attach it to the bottom of this flap. Just like so. Then I can burnish it and then add glue to these flaps right here and bring this up and then you can go ahead and burnish those on as well. All right, now we are going to trim, just angle our other little flaps here. All right, and we're gonna bring back in our base page so on top of our pocket, so the pocket is opening to this side. This is going to get attached over here to this side. So we'll go ahead and add our glue to this. And attach it right over here to the top of this pocket all the way to the side. And all the way. All right, so now we're going to have another flap 
that's the same size that's going to come in from this side but this is the one that's going to have our pocket on it that we created earlier so let's fold this in let's burnish it just like so and then you're going to attach it onto another flap that's five and a half by five and it's going to get attached to this side of our flap right here just like this okay so let's go ahead and add our glue so i'll just do it to the bottom first and this was again just scored at half an inch on the five and a half inch side and just attach it just like this make sure it's not going over the back flap and burnish that and then we will glue these little flaps here as well and bring that up onto this flap and burnish it just like that all right now this is going to get attached right below the paper that we put on here. So that'll kind of be your guide. Let's just miter these. And add our glue. And then right below here and all the way to both sides. And then we'll burnish that down. All right, and then I'm trying to think, I think I'll put the magnet like right here. So grab a negative and a positive and let them snap together. And I'll add the magnet right there. And close it up so that it's right there and there. Okay, so that finishes page style C. <laughs> so we have a pocket here, an acetate pocket, and then you have room for photos here. And then we have another pocket here, and then more room for photos. And then you have your large pocket here. And then this whole flap opens and you have your two angle pockets and then you still have your top pocket here. Okay guys, so I have gone ahead and finished both sides of all of my pages. So I've got my six layouts done. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and add pattern paper to the the pages and all that i'm going to do is i'm going to measure each one of my spaces and i'm going to go down a quarter inch with each little mat or layer that i do so for instance here i know that this piece is five and a half by two and a half so i would just go down to two and a quarter by five and a quarter for this to map this right and, I, and then I would do the same thing on the back and I would just keep going through like that and like for these flaps here these anything that's underneath I'm probably just going to mat with either white cardstock or the jade cardstock that we've been using as well um but that's basically it uh so i'm going to do that i'm going to go through and i'm going to mat and then i'll come back and we'll talk about um our inserts one more quick thing these sections here i'm just going to do i'm not going to go the full 
with my pattern paper. I'm not going to go all the way in with it, right? Because that's a big waste of pattern paper in there. So I'm probably just going to do like an inch and a half strip to go into these tops and then just glue that in. And the same thing with any other pocket, right? So this is a, you know, this one is a, a fairly deep pocket, right? But I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm just going to do, because this pocket goes all the way down here, but I'm just going to do like an inch or inch and a half strip and just glue that in, okay? So that's all you need to remember for matting is to just go a quarter inch smaller both ways and that's your mat, all right? And then I'm going to come back and talk about the sizes of the inserts. Okay, so I've gone ahead and matted all of the pages. So either with pattern paper or with just white cardstock or I've left them blank if I didn't feel like they needed any matting on them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach these pages into the book. I do still have some inserts to do, but I, I'm going to get them in the book and then I'll work on the inserts. So I'm going to start at the back and for me, I'm going to do it with this pocket page as my, I guess it would be the fifth page and then this will be the sixth page. So it's just going to go right here on this spine so that's on the side of our, our open frame over here. It's going to go on this spine here. So I've attached some three or sorry, some half inch score tape. And I'm just going to line this up so that it's just a touch away from my fold for my bending line here from where it bends. I'm just going to line it up so that it's just a touch away from there. And the piece that we attached that is covering our spine is the same size as our pages. So it's going to be super easy to line them up top and bottom. But just kind of make sure you're staying just a little bit away from the folding and bending line here. So I've just started by folding my tape back a little bit to expose a bit of my adhesive. And then I'm going to line it up. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm going to press down that adhesive and then I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of it, okay? So that is our first page attached in. I am so excited to see this book come together. All right, so the second page for me is going to be one of our little acetate pockets and the waterfall type of thing on the back. So that is going to be my second page. And this is actually a lot easier than the first page because it's going to butt right up against this page here. So we can just go ahead and take a little bit of that backing off and lay it down so that it is coming right along this page here. And make sure it's lined up at the top too. All right, and then once you have it, you can go ahead and press that adhesive down and remove the rest of the adhesive. And then just press that down right in there. Oh, it's laying beautifully too, because we have those nice big three quarter inch waterfall pieces here. And we're giving it three quarters of an inch in between. All right, so my final page is going to be, my front page is going to be this one here. So the waterfall one, and then my envelope is on the back. So again, we're just going to remove a bit of the backing, bend it back so we can see it, and then just line it up to that previous hinge. And then once you have it, you can press down that adhesive and remove the rest of it and then just carefully guide it down and then that's the final one. Oh my goodness look at our book I am just absolutely in love with this book in love with it okay so let's get started on creating our expandable pocket for the back of our album 
All right, so we're first going to work on a piece that measures five and three eighths by eight and three quarters. And on the five and three eighths side, you're going to score it half an inch and then it's seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's the piece we're going to start with. And we are going to cut out an aperture here. So what we need to do first is get our frame ready. So the frame pieces measure eight and a half. There's two that are eight and a half by three quarters of an inch. And then there's two that are four and a half, or sorry, four and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. Let me just double check that. Yeah, four and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. So two at that and two at eight and a half by three quarters, okay? So to make it easier to cut out our frame, we're gonna go ahead and make this frame first, then attach it to the piece we're gonna cut out of. All right, so what we're gonna do is these are gonna lay together like this on our four sides, and then we are just going to cut them at an angle, okay? So you're gonna take one long piece and one short piece, and put them together corner to corner like this so that they're even front and back. Then I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut from this corner here to that tip there. Just like so. So that's gonna give us our first frame piece and then we'll go with this one next. So again, just tack them together like this and then cut up to that corner and try to keep them where they go. And then we'll do this one next. So I'm just gonna flip it so it's easier for me to see, but And then we'll do our final one right here. So again, just tack them together. Make sure they're even because even the slightest, even the slightest little space can make a big difference. And then cut there like that. All right, and that's gonna give us our little frame. So next we just need to grab some tape. I'm just gonna use quarter inch tape. And what we're gonna do is basically flip the entire frame over like this. So we're gonna put this guy here and then this one like this and this one like this and then this one like this. And we're gonna tape them together. Just, just little, just enough to tack them together. So just like a little piece like this. And line them up. And then just put a little piece of tape. This just makes cutting out our, our aperture just insanely easier. <laughs> I used to really struggle with these and I don't anymore because I do this step first. All right, and then just this last one here. So that one will go there. And then this one down here. And now we have our frame. Super, super easy to do it this way. All right, so now we're gonna bring back our piece that was five and three eighths by eight and three quarters. And we are just going to lay it right on top of here, leaving an even space all the way around. So about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then we'll, we'll glue it on. So I'm gonna remove these little tape pieces. Just 
the backings of them, I should say, not the actual tape. And then I've got my Fabri-Tac here and I just like to use Fabri-Tac for this step because I can move it around a bit. Put that all the way around. And then flip it over and attach it. You could also do this step with um, just your cardstock, like a diff, like a complementing cardstock. If you didn't want to use the, um, if you didn't want to use the pattern paper yet, that would look really good too. And the cardstock color that I'm using back here is from Stampin' Up. And it is called Just Jade. It's a really pretty color and it goes with this collection really, really nicely. All right, so now we're gonna cut this out. So I've got my cuddle bug plate here. And all we're gonna do is you're gonna grab a craft knife and your just a cutting surface. It doesn't really matter what it is. Just something you can cut into. And, now, and then I have a little ruler here, a straight edge doesn't, I prefer metal rulers for this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to go about the same amount of space as I have out here in here. So about an eighth of an inch away from my frame. And then I'm gonna start about an eighth of an inch down and cut down. And I'm gonna stop about an eighth of an inch before I get to the bottom and you'll feel where it stops right there. So same thing here, I'm gonna line it up so it is about the same amount of space away and I'm gonna again start about there, like just about an eighth of an inch down and cut till you're about an eighth from this end here. All right, and then once you've got around, if you've still got your corners sticking a little bit, you can go ahead and just use your scissor to finish cutting them. You can also go back in with your craft knife, but this works too. And there we go. We've got our little aperture cut. Okay, so my acetate piece that's gonna go on the back here measures four and a quarter by eight and a half. And I've just gone ahead and attached some score tape, some quarter inch score tape around all four sides on the back of it. And that is just gonna go right onto our opening here, just like so. All right, and that is that part of it done. So now we're gonna go ahead and attach this piece to the back of our expanding pocket. So this piece measures five and three quarters by eight and three quarters, and it's just gonna get attached right to the bottom here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little miter on my half inch little flap down here, and I'm gonna use the arc glitter glue to attach it. So just get your glue on here. Just like so. All right, and then that is just gonna get attached 
right along the side here or the bottom. I'm going to put it this way so I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So it should be the exact same length as our base piece and make sure that it's not sticking over on any sides. And then we'll pick it up and burnish it down just like so. All right, and then you can push back that other gusset and burnish that as well. Yeah. So our pieces that are gonna make our pocket expandable measure four and three eighths by two. And I just did it just an eighth shorter than this section here because I don't want it to be hitting at the bottom, okay? So four and three eighths by two. And on the two inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch, one inch and one and a half. And you're gonna do that twice, okay? And they are going to attach here with the W section, so the, the point of the W that it's gonna create is gonna to go towards the inside, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and add glue to this little flappy here. Just like that. And I'm gonna attach it about an eighth of an inch away from this score line here, right so about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom and right along the edge of this piece. So that then when we fold this up, it's going to fold over very comfortably, okay? So let me score or let me burnish and then I'll show you how far away I did it. All right, so about that far. So just a little bit above my score line here, okay? And we're going to attach the other one the same way. So remember, this time our W is going to be going this way, the point of our W. And we're going to put glue on this section, like so. Make sure you get a nice amount of glue on there because it is going to be what holds our whole thing together. And again, just a bit up from the bottom and right along this edge over here. I do find it a lot easier to build these pockets on the outside of the book onto a separate sheet, then attach them in because it can be so frustrating <laughs> to build them inside the book. Um, so I do find this is a lot easier. And then this is just going to come up and attach to these. So we can go ahead and add our glue to these sections here. The top of our expanding piece. All right, and then just kind of press them in while you lift this. And then just press it down in these sections here and use the bone folder to make sure your glue is nicely adhered in there. All right, so now let's go ahead and work on the top that's going to come down over our expanding pocket. So this piece measures four and three eighths by eight and three quarters. So it's four and three eighths going this way. And you're gonna score at half inch and at seven eighths, all right? Because the whole pocket is gonna have a three eighths of an inch gusset, okay? Then what we're gonna do is on the three, eight and three quarter inch side, you're gonna mark in at one and a half and at one and a half on both sides, okay? So one and a half, one and a half. And then from the bottom, you're going to mark up one inch here and mark up one inch. And then all we're going to do is take our scissor and cut across. You can also do this with a craft knife. You can do it with your cutter if that is more comfortable for you, but it was easy enough to do it this way, right? And then we'll go ahead and just 
trim off those edges, our little corners. All right, and now this little flap is gonna get attached back here on the top. So we can go ahead and fold it down so it's easier for us. And then add the tape, or sorry, the glue. You could add tape. I just find the glue is so much faster and you have time to move it around a tiny bit, not much time with the arc glitter glue. You don't have a ton of time. And then just attach that right along the top and even to both sides. Just like that. And then you can lift it up and make sure it's not sticking over. And then we can open that up and burnish that down. And then again, we can fold back our gusset and reinforce that. But how stinking cute is that pocket? I am just going to do a magnetic closure and I am going to use the um, basic gray magnets because they have a dry adhesive on the back. And it's just going to be a lot easier than using glue or things like that with. And I am just going to use the basic gray magnets and I'm going to put it I'm just trying to think. I think I'm going to put it here where I want it and a little further up. Yeah, put it there first and then I'll remove the backing. And make sure that when you put it down that your top flap here is nice and square, okay? You don't want it to be at all angled. So bring it down and make sure your sides are even as well. And then you can press it down so that it catches that magnet like that, okay? And then that is how that is gonna close. So cute. And then to do the matting for the top of the pocket here, all we're gonna do is place our piece of pattern paper on there. And the pattern paper measures three and a quarter tall by eight and a half wide. And all you're gonna do is make an equal mark here. So we've got about an eighth of an inch on these three sides, right? So you're gonna make about an eighth of an inch mark up here and then in here. if my pen will work. And then same thing on this side. Careful not to move it. So, about that far in and about that far in on this side, okay? And then again, I'm just gonna cut across, but you could totally use your craft knife or whatever you'd like to use. And then that is just going to layer in there perfectly and no fuss, no muss. So I'll just grab my fabric tack and glue that on there. And then you would repeat the same steps to mat the back of the pocket as well. Open it here so I can get a better just like that. 
Now let's go ahead and attach this into the book. Okay guys, now we're gonna go ahead and just attach our little pocket into the back of the album. I did put a piece of pattern paper down in here, but I'm gonna leave the magnet uncovered and I'm going to leave this up here uncovered because I just kind of like the look of it. I think it kind of adds to like the industrial, like masculine look of the book to leave the magnet e exposed, but you can go ahead and cover yours. You'll just make your pattern paper layer for the inside the same way we did for the outside. So I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac. All right, so that completes the inside of the um, album. And now this is basically finished. I've gone ahead and added all of my pockets, or sorry, my inserts in. So it's going to be a full cut list available for this album, including your scoring guide as well. So you'll be able to cut and score and everything before you get going on the tutorial. And that's going to be linked below to my Etsy shop, okay? So thank you guys so much for supporting me. Um, always, I just love you guys so much. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put some pattern paper on the sides and the back, and then I'm going to do the walkthrough so you guys can see the, the album fully finished. But thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.